When did you announce your campaign? I announced the week of Thanksgiving, earlier in the week of Thanksgiving in 2023. So tell me, what, what are your top priorities if elected? That's a really good question. <clears throat> and so what I've been doing is I've been having what I'm calling neighborhood connections where I am inviting um, residents and business owners into community spaces to really hear from them. So sure, as a former commissioner, I have a whole lot of ideas of things that I'd like to continue, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to see grow, or thoughts that I may think would be valuable things to bring to this office. But I think it's also important to hear from the community and bring their ideas with me. And so that's what I've been doing with these neighborhood connections. And so some of what I'm hearing are similar to the things that I'm interested in. So housing, um, you know, being able to have like a business ombudsman office where businesses can tap into one person and get their um, questions answered and can help them to navigate through city government. Um, we're also, you know, looking at the expansion of the Third Ward Equity Fund. Um, when we think about, you know, where, how it's funded currently, I'm grateful, but I also know that there's more room to expand that. And then to also look across the city to see what other areas in the city need reinvestment, um, similar to what happened with the Third Ward. Um, the SAFE Task Force, as the former chair of that task force, definitely would like to see that expanded and to see that elevated a little bit more. Obviously, we've done some great work. Over $600,000 has been poured into, you know, grassroots organizations to address, you know, violence in our community. And I'd like to see how can we expand that and how can we grow some of those smaller nonprofits. So those are just a few that I'm thinking about, but also some that are similar to what I'm hearing in the community. I was going to say, um, so the Third Ward Equity <coughs> Fund, for people who don't understand what the Third Ward Equity Fund, you had a huge part in that. Can you explain that and what, what your intentions are to grow that? I, so the Third Ward Equity Fund, if I can just share a quick story, yeah. started when um, Commissioner Dave Allen and I um, protested, if you will, or boycotted an exercise that the City Commission was having during one of our strategic planning sessions. We were um, asked to put dots on different ideas that were capital improvement projects on, a, on, you know, those large sticky notepads, right? And we were asked to put dots to prioritize our thoughts and our thinking. And as we were going through, I noticed that none of them were in the third ward. And what it did for us, I think for everyone who was there that day, it helped us to see that some of what we had been saying and expressing about you know, under investment or we need to do more, it, it, it actually helped us to see how it happens. And it's because we weren't, we weren't um, the city was not prioritizing third, you know, projects in the third ward. And so from that, you know, boycott, if you will, came this third ward equity fund because what we wanted to do was to reinvest in the third ward. Um, the Economic Development Department did a study and their data supported what we saw through that small exercise that we had underfunded the third war significantly over a number of years, if not decades. And so what we wanted to do was put money behind reinvesting in an area in our city that had been underinvested by the city of Grand Rapids. And in a way, that that's an, a direct address of systemic racism, I think, in a lot of ways. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely, and so systems create the experiences that we all have in our city, and you're exactly right. So there was a system, there was a structure that existed to underfund one of the most diverse wars in our city. And so, and we know that the largest population of black people are in the third ward, so that, so that was a direct connection. If you go right to those neighborhoods specifically, 49507, we're actually sitting in my office here in 49507, which is an, an intentional decision as well, because there was underinvestment right here in this zip code and broadly in this community. And so these, this is what people have experienced. You remember the Forbes article that said, Grand Rapids is the second worst place to live for black people economically. And that was a shocker for many people, but their black people weren't as shocked by that as others were because we were experiencing that living in this city and seeing the blight or seeing the underinvestment. And so sure, you know, when, when the data comes out and we're seeing those articles, 
we know where it's coming from and this is why we have to have systemic changes in order to address and undo some of those challenges. Is that something more broadly you plan to work on as mayor? Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things I keep saying to people about some of the work that I'll do is really is to open up the junk drawer of Grand Rapids. So it's a, an amazing place to live. I've lived here since I was nine years old um, and really have enjoyed it. I went to college here. I have raised my family here. And so this is home for me. Um, but we also know what happens when company comes over. We have a, a drawer that we may throw all of the keys and the mail and everything that's on the counter in. And we'll get to it when we, you know, whenever we can. But that junk drawer is a mess sometimes. And it does take opening it up and addressing the issues that are in there. And I think we have that in our city where we've put some things away. And we just need to open up the drawer to address them. That's exactly one of those issues that we need to come unpack and address so that we can all have the same experience here. You know, it's, it's the initiative, the DEI initiatives we've all been hearing about. You hear about them at conferences all the time. I'm sure in your profession you're talking about it. I know it at the different chambers of different calibers, they're talking about it. You know, so everyone across the spectrum, schools are talking about it. We're all talking about it. But when it's time to take action and do the things that are necessary to make the change that we all say we want to see, that's when it gets a little uncomfortable for people. And it's time for us to just have those challenging conversations, make those challenging decisions so that we can have the outcomes that we're all seeking. We were just at um, MLK yesterday for the groundbreaking. So cool. And, you know, and it's things like that that, that it's just like, and, and so some of the funding from the Third Ward Equity Fund contributed to that. And so it's things like that where it's just like, this is amazing. And this is what you can do. And, you know, some of the intimate conversations I had with um, staff members from the city, neighborhood association members, you know, who were all saying, thank you. Thank you. Because it started off as a refresh of the lodge. And I was adamant. And sometimes those, that's the challenging thing is when you're adamant and you're like, no, we can do better than this. Let's stretch ourselves to do better than this. And then you have an outcome like this. We're all just excited, you know, to see the, the, the groundbreaking of that and, and what's to come because the community deserves that. And so that's how you, that's how you dismantle the things that aren't working well. And on the other side of it, no one's harmed. We are all benefiting from it, but we didn't want to take the necessary steps in the beginning. And sometimes it just takes a lot more conversing and a lot more meeting to help people to understand and bring them around like, no, this is worth the investment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want, so I want to talk next week, <coughs> push gears a little bit. So we have some major projects on the horizon in Grand Rapids. Okay. We have a lot of people talking, the amphitheater, yeah. the soccer stadium. Yeah. Give me your thoughts on those projects and what would you do with them as mayor? So, you know, on my website, I talk a little bit about um, Grand Action 2.0 and, and my interest and desire to, to see those projects move forward. You know, those are the projects that you have once in a lifetime. But what's important about those projects is to do those projects well because they're once in a lifetime. You don't, you know, we're looking at the Van Andel. I don't know how old it is, 25 years old or something like that. Like you don't, you don't get those things frequently. So you want to make sure that when you're doing them, that you're doing them really, really well. And so, you know, I know that there are places that have done projects of that magnitude really well. Um, you know, I remember a colleague in, in the city telling me about Atlanta, Georgia and one of their larger, I think it may have been a, a stadium and how they were able to galvanize the community so that the community could be a part of, of, of the structure, embedded in the structure at the very beginning. I remember advocating for that. I know that there is a lot of community engagement that's happening. And what we want is engagement that results in change, engagement that results in, in seeing people's ideas come to fruition. It's going to be extremely important for all of the people who are stakeholders in these massive projects to understand that we are all a part of the community. As I was at the, at the groundbreaking um, last night um, for MLK Park, someone mentioned, you know, these are our tax dollars. So this is great that we're doing this, but we're all contributing to it. And we all need to see ourselves as investors in a lot of these projects as well so that we can come to the table with our ideas to make sure that our voices are heard. And as mayor, that would be something that I would be championing. I know that they're doing some of that now, but I won't stop there. We're going to make sure that those voices are 
integrated and embedded in the fabric of these institutions that are going to be in our com community, which we are all, you know, grateful that they're coming, um, but we want to make sure that they have the impact that we're all intending. I think the other thing that I think about with some of these larger projects is, is that as we're doing this, we also have to do the other things in our city to make sure that the structure is in place and that things are also happening the way that they should happen. I say to my kids sometimes, you can't do the extra credit until you do the homework. So, you know, these bigger, broader things that are going to attract people into our city are really great things that we need and we want. But some of the homework is making sure that our roads are taken care of, making sure that people have access to city staff, and making sure our, our um, good governance is at a high quality so that people are interacting and engaging with government very, very well. So we have to balance some of those structural things, and we can't not do those well as we're looking at some of the other things, these bigger and broader and more flashier things that we're considering. Okay. Well, if you could name a few topics, what are your main um, your main missions or causes or things you want to champion if elected? Well, I think some of them we've talked about already. Third Ward Equity Fund and then combing through the city. Here's another one that I'll talk about is A2P. So you, because you follow our local government, probably have heard me talk about A2P, but it's my, my thing, it's not the city's thing. Um, and it's talking about having what I'm, what I'm calling um, diversity in our um, housing stock and in our investments into housing. So how do we reimagine streets like Alpine, 28th Street, and Plainfield, or Lake Michigan Drive, as Commissioner O'Connor would always correct me? You know, how, would we, how can we reimagine those places for housing? So we're in a city where we're kind of deadlocked in our land. You know, we've built as much as we possibly can. We know we're building up and that's, that's important for us to have, but we need diversity in our housing stocks. And so when we look at places where there are gaps and openings where retailers used to be, especially large retailers with re really large parking lots, we've seen buildings that are on slivers of land in downtown. So how can we reimagine some of the spaces on those corridors to be able to get some of the housing that we need in our city? So that's another one. Um, we've talked a little bit about SAFE, so those are some of the initiatives that I'll be bringing with me and talking about when I get there. Is there anything else you'd like to add or talk about? Well, I think one of the things that, as mayor, that I, I think I'm learning more and more is the people want access. So, you know, the last couple years um, as a commissioner, I would attend our commission, I would go out on the dais a half hour before the meeting started just to make sure that I was accessible for people to ask whatever questions that they wanted to ask. We know that during public comment, people can't hear from us in that moment. But if you really wanted to you know, talk through some things, I made myself available so that people could ask those questions. And that's something that I'm finding as I'm doing the neighborhood connections that people want. They want to be heard. And so I'm going to make sure that I continue um, instituting something like that, attending the, coming to the meetings early to make sure I'm available, and also some neighborhood connection of some facet so that I can continue to engage with neighborhood associations and with the residents that live across the city in our neighborhoods because this is our community. It's for the business owners who are here so that we can make sure that we're hearing from them and taking their perspectives with us as we're making policy decisions.